Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of my second episode of this podcast series I have on YouTube. Um, before I go into the topic, I would like to induce, induce, introduce a friend of mine and I'm going to allow her to introduce herself. Hi, <laughs> uh, my name is Sabrina. Yeah. I'm a special guest. <laughs> yes, I have a special guest with me today. Um, because I would love to hear her perspective and, you know, her input on this topic we're going to. So, without further ado, um, you can already see on the title that's going to be here. We're going to talk about narcissistic disorder or syndrome. Um, a lot of us have been in a household with narcissistic parents and we weren't aware of it. So, today we're just going to go through what a narcissist is, how you can identify with a narcissist, and um, help you understand how to navigate through life as a narcissist. Well, not nar- being a victim of a narcissist. Um, so let's first start off by like, do we know what a narcissist is? I feel like I have a fairly good understanding of what a narcissist is. Yeah. By definition, I don't want to be wrong. <laughs> so that's why I googled something. So okay. I'm going to read them the Google and then we're just going to talk about it. So the Google says a narcissist is a, pers- a disorder in which a person has an inflated sense of self-importance. I understand a narcissist to be someone who is never happy with themselves but always thinks they're better than everybody Everybody else else. yeah um and that they border or are run a slightly parallel yeah to um being a sociopath Mm. with their lack of remorse Mm -hmm. lack of they do have understanding like how they affect other people yeah a lot of the same like characteristics and traits yeah i actually recently had a conversation with someone who i believe to be a narcissist and he self-diagnosed himself as a sociopath really and i was like like i feel like this is why you are a narcissist because you would not be able to admit you're a, you're narcissist. a narcissist you just think you're a sociopath because you know there's something wrong yeah. with your lack of emotion wow like he knows, and then he went on to spend over this over one hour, probably a healthy fifty percent of it. He was just talking about himself, basically <laughs> trying to, like, I kind of stand, yeah, like trying to boast, like, oh, I could never do this because I'm this. Like they're trying to find a way to could like it be me, yeah, could, yeah. Like I'm just like, like sometimes I question myself sometimes. <clears throat> Since I start researching about this, I, like you know when you start researching something and you're like, Am I is this me? Do I have these tendencies? And then, um, but there. So we're gonna talk about one. We talked about what it is, what they are, but like, what are some traits that our parents had that we didn't know at the time that they were narcissists? I know for me, one of the ones was. The narcissistic parents don't see their children as a human being. Like, they have their own thoughts, their own own, um, visions or goals. They think, this is my property, and you're here to benefit me. And to act accordingly. Yeah. And And what I say goes for you. And you owe me this, like, for the sense of... They make you feel guilty for the things that they're supposed to do. Like, this is your... Like, they're supposed to feed you, clothe you. All the physical things be there, emotional support. But they use it against you to be like, I feed you, and I feel like... I do this and that for you. Yeah. I go to work all day so that you can provide for this. And, like, it's like, I'm supposed to feel guilty for existing. Yes. When you didn't didn't ask me. Yeah. I did not have sex and bring myself here. If I could, I wouldn't have chose you. Like, I wouldn't have chose you as my parent. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's one trait. 
Um, my narcissistic parent was incapable of taking accountability. Yes. Until years later, vaguely admitting that they weren't perfect. <laughs> No one asked for perfection. Far from it. Like, oh, yeah, you know, I mean, some, no, everyone makes mistakes. Yeah. You are abusive. Yes. Yes. Countless, numerous times. Call a spade a spade. It I, is not a simple mistake like, oh, I fell out of, like, a, a new toy or something and I, yeah. like, broke my wrist. Like, That's the oh, dulling no. down that they do to Yeah, cope. no, like, yeah, mm-hmm. and... Um, it's always everybody else. Yeah. It's always everybody it's always else. Somebody, it was the other yeah. parent. It was me. Oh, yeah. Almost like getting me mad. Yeah. Oh. Another excuse too, because of the single parent household I was in, was that your father left, so I had to pick up all that slack. So that was like a big excuse. Oh my god. Yeah, that was a big excuse. Like oh. I have to deal with this and this. I have to be the mother and the father. Look, and where's stuff. your father? Yeah. Where's your that father? doesn't... Like, I understand it's very difficult being a parent, both there, but be doing it by yourself. But that should allow you to sit down and reevaluate what's really important and what you want to happen with you and your child. But the first... Like, if I'm already missing one parent, would you not be want to be the one good one remaining or do you want to can't think like that that's the thing that's where the problem comes in a normal parent who is of sane sanity because narcissistic um being a narcissist is a disorder extremely irrational they they don't think as they don't care for your relationships so you having your father or mother-to-child relationship, father-to-child relationship, doesn't concern that narcissistic parent. Because it's not about them. What absolutely blows my mind, with my mom in particular, Mm -hmm. is that she was one of those women (laughs) that resented my father so much... Mm -hmm. She absolutely was part of the reason and contributed to his absence from yeah. my life, and then would still Same. bring it up yeah. like it was his fault. Now, mm-hmm. it's probably really 50 50 and a lot of gray area on that one, but I know for certain now, as an adult, seeing things clearly, I remember her asking me, like, well, do you want to go see your father, or like, do you want to stay here and hang out with Rachel, your cousin? Like, of course, I want to stay here they and hang out with my cousin Rachel. Like, yeah. You know that. You're you're taking advantage of the fact that I'm an innocent child who doesn't know any better. And mm-hmm. then later on, you're going to tell me, well, like, well, where's your father? Da-da-da, and got me to resent him the same way that yeah. you did. Yeah. And they use, um, they, the parent, the narcissistic parent, in this case, your mother or my mother would use the fact that they're absent so they don't know anything about you make themselves look better if that makes sense i stayed you know like i'm Mm -hmm. here like i didn't go anywhere everything boosts their ego i could have been like any that's what i wanted to say they use it as fuel anything anything because they don't care they disregard your feelings your emotions all of that if they can make themselves feel good, like, at any time, they will take that moment. Like, all the time. Like, I know that I'm doing this for your best interest. Yeah. I know that it's because I don't want you to, like, mess up your life. Yeah. I'm the adult. Like, I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And everything they possibly can find to boost their ego, yeah. you could say... um wow, like, I really like, you know, that color on you. And then you can get a full paragraph about, like, well, this is actually my favorite color because it makes my eyes look like this and it complements my undertone. Blah, 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 of like, but that and, like, anything of, like, my mom would come home because a person, like, complimented her today. We yeah. would talk about it for 20 minutes about how someone called her pretty. Yeah. Or something. And we just, like, like every single, like, oh, I'm a single mother and I do this and I do that and da 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 yeah. Like, okay, congratulations, sweetheart. People do it every day. Like, I'm not yeah. knocking. <laughs> like, I'm saying, like, don't get me wrong. I'm not knocking. Like, it's still a but phenomenal But it's something thing for to you do, like, to indulge in. 
indulge in. You are not special. You laid with these men. You laid with them. You <laughs> sabotaged or jeopardized their relationship because they were not always absent. So the thing to... And she milked it so hard. <laughs> she just milks it so hard. Like... Uh, so. Yeah. The thing to the... What, I, what I've been researching about is that narcissistic syndrome is something that is taken from childhood. So we were all narcissistic before eight years old. That makes sense. Yeah. We, we were <laughs> all about sense. ourselves. But we were... T- right? So we were taught how to, you know, well, not, uh, we were taught these things at school, like the emotions, happy, sad, all of these, anger, how to talk, you know. Sharing is caring. Yes. So we had to be it's taught to be these things. considerate of other people. Yeah. You have to think of how they feel. Yes. Would you like it if that happened to you? Yes. And we can see it in the system when it comes to, for example, let's... The worst case, worst case scenario, children who are orphans or left in, what you call it, in the care, care system, who have no guidance whatsoever. I'm not saying they will become narcissists, but those children, those, um, what do you call the characteristics that you need and we get as people who have somebody... It doesn't matter where you are. Like, if you were an orphan or just us, for example, we could have had parents, they couldn't have parents, and they could have they could have been normal and we could have been a narcissist, if that makes sense. <laughs> you jumped around a little bit. Okay. So, like... So... I apologize if, if other people no, understood fine. that, but not me. I do this. Don't worry. So, for example... We have we have parents at home who aren't narcissists, right? And they teach us to care, be nurturing, be nurturing, and stuff like that. And then you have orphans who don't have that because we know the truth of the fact that um, orphan like foster, it, or, foster care. That's so. it. Foster care sends kids to low budget schools, which means bigger classrooms, less contact to eat you know one-to-one contact so that means individualized personalized learning the time and attention one may need need, to actually develop the skills and intellect yeah i'm with you that's what i mean and then it can go vice versa where you can have a foster care student who didn't get any of that but had a mentor against all odds right mm-hmm. and then you would have someone like us who have a have a parent or parents but they d- they weren't able to give it and then we become the narcissistic person yeah i still feel like that yeah so yes i get what you i figure that's yeah. what you were saying yeah. um i feel like people take certain things too much at face value like you feel because someone grows up with both their parents in a nice house yeah. and this and that, that they're supposed to be okay. But you have no idea what their parenting styles were like, yeah. if they still received the attention they were meant to, if when they acted out or when they show those negative qualities, when they weren't being um, sympathetic, empathetic, those th- emotions you mentioned earlier that we're supposed to learn in school and like yeah. that socialization. Yeah. If they weren't, if they, you know, didn't display those positive behaviors and displayed negative behaviors and it was not corrected yeah, or reprimanded properly, yeah. I feel like that breeds narcissism just the same. Yeah. Enable- How many men do we know hmm. that their mother yeah. is enabling them to this day mm-hmm. of being such a toxic... They can do no wrong... Or they just don't hold them accountable. Or they blame the other person. They'll be like, what did you do to him? Or, Mm. you know, one of those things. Yeah, and it always teaches them that the problem is outside of themselves. Yeah, It's not you. It's It's, Earth. Yeah. It's not me, it's you. Did you do something to provoke him? He's not usually like this. When they well and know they're... they're He wouldn't just do that for no reason. the, The son is... Got problems, you know? They know this. And then 
it I feel that stems from insecurity and self esteem issues of like that what I said before about this is a Family Guy reference about Lois <laughs> about like it reflects per- poorly yeah. on her. Yeah. If I have to send my son to therapy, that means mm-hmm. I'm failing as a mother. So we're just gonna pretend everything's fine. Yeah. Because everything's Definitely. just fine, and yeah. I'm just gonna keep telling him it's fine and me it's fine and That's everyone else is fine. Most of the it's, time, it's so I true. It's fine, but it's not fine. <laughs> It's so true. That's a good point. That is such a good point. And, like, what parents need to understand is that it's okay to get help. Because we have to think about it. I don't want to get too, like, cultural about it. But before the Western world messed up homes, family homes and stuff, you had villages and cultures like before we used to travel as nomads with a bunch of us as a group with our culture and everything in just one bag and we all have like our aunties and our cousins and everything there to learn how to do all of these things but now that we're in this time we're in this time where we're all separate we're all in just single units single boxes trying to figure out everything ourselves when we could go to like our great grandmother and ask oh what did you do when this happened and you know what i mean some families still have like a big family who they can reach out to and still ask these questions but is it good information that they're passing on or is it more toxic to, yeah so it's different than what it used to be you know what i mean yeah it's like they broke the home and then they broke the community yeah and we and then they we, feed us feed us um all kinds of news to make us you know pull us in all types of different directions yeah. and fuel whatever we think we already want to hear yeah. and then at some point i feel like when they i don't know generation x maybe the baby boomers obviously yeah um and they you know created this very toxic generation that made the younger generation at some point lose respect for their elders. Yeah. There was no more respect your ancestors, respect your elders, yeah. trust them, look to them. Yeah. It was resent them. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay, grandpa. Yeah. Like, what do you know? What do you... Like, I find... I That hurts me, too, when I hear, like, a younger person do that. It hurts me because I'm just like, what, what do you mean? This person was your age once. You know, they could probably tell you something every person on the street can tell you something you don't know i guarantee there's this great picture i have on my phone Mm -hmm. that was like imagine imagine like two figures Mm -hmm. like a cartoonistic type like human resembling figure Mm -hmm. and they're constructed of puzzle pieces and the one character is missing all but like one little piece Mm -hmm. one little piece is missing yeah and the person who's giving it to them is missing so many. Mm. And they're made up of very few puzzle pieces, but they're giving the other character the one last piece that they need. Mm-hmm. Meaning you cannot look at someone and be like, oh, you're only this, or you're just that, or you're old, or you're young, or you're poor. They could have the piece that you're missing. Mm. They could have that one word of, of advice yeah, and wisdom that you need. Mm-hmm. And you never know what people have to offer and, yeah. can, and can give you. And... You know, with all due respect, I, I, it does hurt me, of course, to see yeah. anyone being rude, rude or, yeah. or, like, mean to anybody. But yeah. I, like, that's why or I kind of... even doing it vice versa. You're too young to understand or... Yeah, yeah, but, like, I just feel like there is a small... On the one, and from the one perspective of younger people looking to older people, um... Not all of them. It's not fair. Like, it's never fair to categorize an entire or generalize yeah. an entire population of anybody yeah. or a group of anyone and but you know that's what i mean is like and maybe it's not their fault yeah but the, some of those some of that gen like certain generations it's not their fault that, that they became were t- like they they are kind of terrible yeah they are very mean and yes. like, it's like the, like the, a lot of the babies that's just bitter yeah bitter and 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 hateful Mm -hmm. and that and they and they are quote unquote they whoever who had whatever controlled and moved that whole generation in a certain direction of being bitter and putting them through what they went through to make them that way yeah i I feel like that was on purpose because it just bred more toxicity and more narcissism and Mm -hmm. more bitterness and hatred and 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 resentment like 
why should I respect you? Why should I listen to you? Look at you. What do you know? And like, I'm not saying it's true and you shouldn't do it to everybody because obviously, you know, you and I would be considered an exception of our generation, right? Not really though. No. But I feel like a lot of that attitude towards older people came when they stripped that generation of their ability to talk about their feelings, to process them, to... Like, mental health is so much more popular now. Yeah. And talked about. Like, you're not an outcast if you go to therapy. That was weakness back then. Yeah. Men don't cry. Yeah. Don't cry out in public. Keep it to yourself. That's your private life. Like. It's just it's look the part. It's healthy to be out in the open and candid yes. and, and vulnerable. Yes. And they don't know how to, um, they don't know how to handle it now. They don't know how to handle it because people are actually having these conversations to that extent of mental health. People don't know how to handle it. We're, the which older is where generation. I feel like narcissism is getting more revealed now. Yes. Because we are more educated now. Yes. And it also shatters the narcissist world when yes. you figure them out. Yes. And like know my, how to handle them. My father's an empath and his favorite thing is to is like it's this cute thing that he does where he's like and he got triggered because I revealed him. Really? And I was like, that was like the first time he did that, I was like, Okay, and he kept doing it. He was like, See, I revealed you. I was like, What are you, a freaking magician? <laughs> like and it's so crazy because he as an empath you will attract n- not only broken people, but narcissistic people because they're inherently broken. Yes. They, they, they f- like feed off of your healing energy because you're always going to see this light inside of them that yeah. you think is there and they're going to feed off that. That's why shadow work is very important with yourself. Alright, so we know that narcissists can't, are incapable of loving, Right? and crazy it's it's just not possible it's hard and what i can say or advice that we can give one if you're in a household where you're young and you can't leave i'm i'm the, the only thing i can say is if you can just rough it out but I know it's so hard for some it's kids. It's so much easier said than done. I and know. I have a friend currently who is living with her narcissistic mother. Yeah. Nothing's ever good enough. Yeah. Nothing will ever be good enough. And I try to tell her. it's hard for me. You know. You have to remove yourself. Yeah. It is not about you. Mm-hmm. Radically accept. That is just how she is. It is no reflection on you. It is not something to take personal. Yeah. Just keep doing your best and know that it is the best you can do. But how do you um because i used to say to myself too i'm i'm gonna take myself away from that but like imagine as like a kid who can't afford or have a job or anything and just like just feeling really helpless yeah because that's how i felt i didn't i didn't have like any escape no escape at all that was me for a very long my father my father wasn't even in the same country you know what I mean? There was no escape whatsoever. And, like, the easy part was being silent and just keeping your head down. That was the easy part. But the part, the hard part is now, once I've left the situation, coming out of keeping my mouth quiet, um, being afraid to speak sometimes because of the reaction I'll get from somebody you know what I mean? Those are the th- habits I would have to come out of because there was no one there, as we said, as a mentor, to be like, nah, it's okay, you can do this or you can do that. So that's like one advice I would give if you are in that situation right now. Everyone is not your parent. Yes. Everyone is not your parent. And if you are in a household like that, just find one person where you can share your thoughts and your emotions and cry and laugh and all of those things just find one person because where like you can be your true authentic self and you feel safe yes because it doesn't last forever it does nothing lasts forever no there's a light at the end of the tunnel eventually you grow up and narcissists have to have control that's like the whole big thing is you are 
jeopardizing their reality when you shift try to shift that control Mm -hmm. or step out of what they think they're in control of Mm -hmm. be this do this or else etc they make you You feel guilty yeah you'll be an adult one day yes like it totally while you're in it i know it's like oh my god where does this end they're i feel like a narcissistic parents are all they're almost always abusive because Mm -hmm. you're their child and they are you're a little pawn in their game of chess yeah so no matter what, like, they feel most comfortable around you to show their true colors, yes, which is... because they think they own you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there will absolutely come a point where if you either... A, I know some people at some point, this is not the case for me, but when they have physically abusive parents at some point, you know, you, you get bigger than that parent or something, mm-hmm. and they realize, like, no, they cannot hurt you physically anymore. Yeah, that was me. Yeah. Not same. I'm never. My mom will always be bigger than me. Probably yeah. until she's a crippled old lady will I ever be able to like. Maybe now would it be a fair fight, but like, if I were to ever try to defend myself physically, it would have been oh I will fight. My you, mother like, nearly took my eye out with a fork. Yeah, that's how. And I never like. I never like. Um, I never pushed violence. You know what I mean? And it was just like. It's, and the thing too with them is like you can never do anything right. You yeah, no, like if I ne- try to run away from her while she's trying to hit me, like you, that's just worse. You can never do anything right because I'm telling you, it's like living with one of the bullies from school. Because like I remember, I remember one instance when something had happened. Like I told the truth to the other parent. And the other parent called her and was like, you need to stop doing this, calling her out on her bullshit. And I came home and I felt the wrath. Mm -hmm. And she just got mad. But anyway, after that, she literally ripped the clothing I had on, the bra I had on. She was just like really violent. She locked me in. I couldn't leave. She hid the key because like back home you had grills. Like in your, the tropical countries, you have like grills, like um, iron grills with the padlock. And then you have your door, your normal door. It's like a porch, but it has grills outside. Then they have some in Florida. Yes, I yes. know exactly what you're talking about. And um, she took the key and I couldn't leave because I was prepared to leave because th- that was the last straw. Because I imagine not doing anything. You have children who are I'm not going to say bad because I don't think kids are bad I think kids need help, love and nurturing direction, they need, right, they're not bad you just don't know what they need that's all, they need direction so they act out or they do things or like you yes, know, but you weren't a blatantly I wasn't like disrespectful that. Right. or acting out of character type of child right, I wasn't like that you had some children who not ran that away. Not ever any good reason to be abusive, but right. there was not even any You reason. shouldn't do it none at all. Let's right. just say that. We shouldn't do it. None. I didn't give her a reason. To even be upset. Yeah. I wasn't the problem that made you feel like that. Never, ever, when she behaved like that, I was never the problem. It was always something outside of her, and she took it out on me because I was the oldest, and my sisters were young at the time, so she couldn't really take it out on them because they're young. So if you hit them and hurt them, they could be bruised or they could die. So I was like the scapegoat. So anyways, that happens. And then a couple of years later, um, because there's no father figure in the home and I'm the oldest out of the sisters, something happens and... I did, like, I pinched my little sister because she was doing something that was going to harm her. Like, she was going to touch something, and it probably was going to fall on her. I don't remember what it was. I was like, don't do that, right? You know, like, out of instinct, you're like, no, come, so they can move really quickly. So it was something like that. So she tells my mom, and my mom is like, she says something, as, and she's like, oh... I never, I I never hit you, 
and she said some stupid shit. She was just like, um, well, don't put your hands on them. I don't put my hands on you. Da, da, da. And I was just like, well, you can't do that now because I will probably punch you in your face. You can't mm-hmm. do that now. In my head, I'm saying you can't do that. And I'm, I'm just like, you did that all the time. You know what I mean? So I'm just like, and that's another thing where I'm having an issue with how narcissists are incapable of love. Because the way she treated me, because my, my sis, me and my sisters have different fathers. The way she treated me was completely different to how she treated my younger sisters. Right? So I'm trying to wrap my head if they don't love, but they, they, ha- they, they show affection through seduction and manipulation. And she doesn't like my father. She doesn't like my father. And I said she takes out the external pain and puts it on me so she probably doesn't like my father so she takes it out on me because i look like my father oh my goodness my mom did the same thing but my sister she was in a very full relationship with their fathers so it's it's they're they're treated different because she probably likes something in that father more than mine do you understand so she pro- she probably thinks okay th- these children were made out of something you know i'm trying to wrap my hand around the logic because there was it was i have eyes to see that the treatment was different mm-hmm. you know what i mean but i just don't understand now, was that. their father more present yeah i feel like that also had a lot to do with it yeah so i was like i don't understand the love part because i don't think she loved i think it was a very oppor- opportunistic relationship yeah, because that all made her look good yes and i think um it was more of an an image and faking love because they're incapable of it and the fact that you didn't sustain this relationship means because if love was there i genuinely think your relationship would have you know flourished out of all of that you know what i mean but what do you think about that whole I just um, I just don't I'm believe think, well what I'm thinking at this moment is about well first of all how I couldn't continuous continuously hurt somebody that I truly loved right for so fucking long yeah yeah maybe like okay you have like imagine you have a friendship yeah and you're toxic like yeah. I like I be from I I was toxic I know for a fact that was toxic yeah. because I became I was a classic like because my mom was mean I was mean yeah. you know everybody was mean to me and for a very yeah. long time in my life nobody was nice to me so yeah. that made me very mean mm-hmm. but it took me yeah. realizing that my toxicity was hurting that people that I loved and care about so I made it better yeah. and that happened over the course of. I don't know, a few years. Yeah. Like, I'm not saying that as a short time. I'm saying I went for how many years of my life and you never fixed it. Yeah. How? Mm-hmm. How? Mm-hmm. I didn't want to even hurt my friends. Yeah. And you could keep hitting your own daughter? Yeah. Clearly, there's mm-hmm. something wrong with the wiring in your brain. And me and my sister also had... My sister and I also had mm-hmm. the... Uh, different fathers and um, I don't know she was abusive to both of us but she had a better relationship with my sister's same. father and they were closer yeah same they they were definitely closer and she, but my sister's older so I don't know she but we both of our fathers were absent but it's so crazy because now Kenny can walk all up, walk in her apartment and they'll he he ha ha mm-hmm. till the break of dawn. She doesn't even know who my father is anymore. I hate him. I hate him. He was a real piece of shit to me when you were da 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 da. Like she still has so much bad. My father is an exceptionally better person mm-hmm. than. And I'm not like to say like he has his life together. He is healed. Yeah. He does good for himself. He takes good care of himself. Yeah. And I'm not saying like these are things that make you like better or worse but like as far as like speaking on character Mm -hmm. and like the quality of life and everything like for you to this day still hate him and resent him you don't even know him but kenny's okay and he's like a functioning alcoholic (laughs) 
and like mm-hmm. still just is a you know got you know like just he's still the same person. Mm-hmm. He's still the same person that abandoned your daughter. Mm-hmm. My father has improved tremendously, but you still don't like. I just don't get it. Like she just she just can't. I don't know. I don't know what she can't. I don't know what she's doing. A thing. I too. just don't get it. I don't know if that answered your question either. My thought on it is... No, that does. Yeah. The treatment definitely was different, and it must... I don't know. The thing, too, is I want to start they with... both abandon us, though. Sorry, anyway. That's cool. It's, it's... With men, the narcissistic trait is more popular, and scientifically, scientifically proven, women... Some women gain this disorder after childbirth. Because, yeah. So, when a baby is... Our human body is up to... The limit goes up to, like, 45. For example, say it's, like, 45. That's the pain tolerance of a normal human body, like, to death. Right? Mm -hmm. When a woman gives birth, it's double that. So, it's, um, it's... You're facing death, like, almost dying by giving birth... And imagine someone who isn't as mentally capable or intelligent as us right now, who don't have and the information. And from an even more abusive household. And didn't, you know, correct that. And then, you know, conceived a child. And now giving birth, dealing with this numerous times. Because, you know, they've had and more than one. what you have to go through as a mother. Plus, when you leave the hospital and go home, then you have to think about other things instead of actually reflecting and like, am I okay? Um, is my body okay? You're just thinking about not making this baby suffer. That's the main thing that's on your mind. Failing. Or failing. And then there's no one there to help. And they said some people are either A, born of this, or they gain it through a... I don't want to lose a thought... They gain this disorder from from a low as a coping me- mechanism. Mm. Because, for example, a single parent when she goes out there, and pro- let's talk about it. Like the pr- promiscuous women, right? Use men for money because they say it's to feed their children. It's a coping mechanism. And if they were called out and saying what you're doing is wrong, they'd be like, nah. They really think so. That's where it comes. That's one way it can come, or just manipulating people, making them feel sorry for you, and wanting you to give you things or stuff like that. You know, I feel like that also, like what you said about basically after you give birth, you have forced into survival mode. Yes, I feel like that also comes from that what you said before of like the household and community being broken, mm-hmm. and like what we're talking about. Yeah, how it used to be. Most people, like, even if you were not wealthy, you had other mm-hmm. family members yeah. in your home to help you. Yeah. And support you and be there for you and guide you. Yeah. Do you think my mother had that? My mother Because I didn't know she that. didn't. Yeah. Yeah. She had nobody, nothing. Mm-hmm. And then on top of that, because of what she went through and was not able to heal from. Yeah. The men she lied down with. Were no better. Were n- yeah, we all know I feel that. like it may have been better with Courtney's father, mm-hmm. but with mine, I know. But that's where the sympathy comes in for me, because I understand. No, that's where I forgave her. Yeah. That's where I, I forget- really was in. But what I'm saying is, they can become better themselves. Eventually, I think it's eventually, a but we ourselves don't have to stick around for it. I think a lot of people are afraid to leave because they're bonded by family and blood and guilt. The narcissist yeah. makes you feel I like, for instance, my friend, a friend of mine, yeah. she has a mother who just expects the absolute <laughs> motherfucking world <laughs> from her and then says. Like, you're not doing enough. Yes. Like, oh my oh my goodness, well, what if this happens or what if yeah. that and just puts the weight of the world on her shoulders and then if. I'm my like, girlfriend. Let's call her Jessica. Yeah. I'm like, Jessica, leave. Mm-hmm. Leave. She is a grown woman. It is yeah. not your responsibility to take care of her children. It's not your responsibility to keep her household together mm-hmm. or pay her bills or make sure her youngest daughter is doing online school during COVID and da da da. Like, 
I was you okay are with your all of that person. responsibility. Yeah, like, you are your own person. That was mm-hmm. my sister, which is why she was also abusive to me because yeah. she resented me. She yeah. put in charge of me. When my mother was at work dealing with the repercussions of her own decisions and I was working late because she didn't want to wake up early in the morning type yeah. like type ish. And you mm-hmm. know, you laid with men that you weren't certain were going to support children if you did have a baby with them. Yeah. Like at the end of the day, I understand we're all allowed to have pleasurable feelings and lust for people but you need to understand there's a possibility a child will come out of you laying with someone and if you would not have yeah. a child with the person you are laying with do not lay with them yes so um so now if it's a if this it's person a sexual relationship basically yeah yeah right yeah. where where procreation can yeah. happen um yeah if there's no baby i mean you still gotta deal with soul ties and, yeah. and stuff like that but you know you, you use protection like, oh, things yeah. are being inserted places use protection yes. but i'm just saying <laughs> yeah i'm just saying now still to this day this friend is suffering mm-hmm. because i know it's easier said than done but because she still allows her mother to guilt her into believing that she has to stay has to hold down the fort and i'm like if you would be able to put this effort and energy into yourself you would be completely self-sufficient yes and completely out independent on your own thriving but when i met you you could not do half of this and now your mother's guilted you into half of it and you still can't believe in yourself yeah and i wish so desperately i could get her to see but her narcissistic mother inhibits her every single day Speaking of narcissistic mothers as well, one thing, this is how I know. Okay, so Mm -hmm. another thing that narcissistic mothers do in mother-daughter relationships, it also happens with father-son's relationship, but mostly mother and daughters, the mothers are usually jealous of their daughters because it's a younger version of them with so much potential who is that why my mom made me fat? <laughs> Let me, I'm gonna get to that. I'm, I'm get not to that. currently fat, but when I'm I was gonna get a kid, to that, I, was. I started putting on weight and I asked my I asked if, like, I, I said to my mother, let's stop eating meat because I was working, so I was contributing to like groceries and stuff, but she doesn't want that. She doesn't want the veggies and stuff like that. So I gave her like a portion of money to buy food or do whatever she wants to do with that. So when I came home, I don't really eat. But you know meat makes you bloated and it does all of that oh, stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and it was just really inflamed. hard because I'm just like, I really want to change for the better. And the space we're in was very small. I didn't have my own room and stuff like that. So I wasn't really, fo- I didn't really care about that. I was just really focused on my goal to just leave. You know what I mean? But I'm just saying, like, when it came to my physical health, I wasn't taking charge of me. And she, like, I think she enjoyed this. You know what I mean? I think she enjoyed the fact that I'm trying so hard and failing at something because she's stuck in her her little bubble of she hasn't reached where she wants to reach so she wants company company. and um so with that being said uh, and to add to what you're saying like a a reiteration sort of is if you were to meet your goals that would make her feel poorly on herself yes when people are nurses i feel like a lot of narcissists are incapable of being happy for other people and they genuinely do not want to see you succeed because yeah. then they, you could be doing better than them. Yeah. No one's allowed to be better than them. Yes. They have to be the best in control. I have the most yeah. money. I have the you know then, finest partner. I have the nicest car. I have the nice you know keeping up with the Joneses type attitude. Yeah, and they're they're she, mostly, her daughter can't shine her basically. Yes, that is so true. And um, I remember one instance too, <laughs> where the virginity check thing that was done to me it was and it's still a part of my life where I'm just like it's hard for me I'm still like dealing with it because I just don't know like I didn't know it was a big thing until like one day I just flipped out um so they tricked me into doing it because I did sports and my right knee has always been an issue because I had um um I don't even remember I I 
I used to remember the name, but I had this thing with my knee. Tall people problems, but anyway, it's meniscus. Um, it was like a thin layer of my cartilage, and it was just being rubbed out because the ground I was improper shoes all oh, that. Oh yeah, it's a common like sport injury I think too. Yeah, it's some osteo name. Okay. Yeah. Not osteoporosis. No. <laughs> it's some weird name. Okay. But um, she said we're going to the doctors to check my knee and stuff. And when I went there, she's like, oh, I might as well do the check to see if you're a virgin. And I'm just like, what? Because she asked me this a cup, I think a month or so before she and my aunt. And I told my aunt. And I thought I could confide in my aunt without her telling my mother something. And that's where my trust issues came in. Because you think you have somebody on your side, and then you don't. I thought you are just safe with. Or anybody. So that's why I'm saying I didn't have anyone there. So I told her before I even went in the presence of my I said, yo, auntie, my mom wants to give me a virginity check. She told you about that? And she was like, yeah, I'm mean, no. Like... <laughs> Sorry, I'm speaking Jamaican. Don't be sorry. Um, I'm venting to her and telling her, like, I've told her I'm not doing anything. Even though it's none of y'all's fucking business anyways if I want to have you. sex. Yeah. It is not your vagina. It is my vagina. It's as long me. as you teach me how to safely do, do it. it. It's the reason I have safe. it. I was literally in your womb with my eggs in my fallopian tubes. So therefore, anyways... So I say to her all of these things, and she was like, yeah, I know you're not doing anything, and like she's acting like she don't know what the fuck is going on, and and I'm like, so you're going to play stupid, okay. <laughs> and then she's like, I did it to, she did it to her own daughter when she was 14, uh, my cousin, great cousin, and I was just like, all right, cool, I'm safe, right? And then the day comes. So now, after that session, it was weird, because like, first of all, it was a man, it was a oh male doctor. Goodness. It was a male doctor. I so know. inappropriate. I don't like that. My first time. So you just got male doctors out here touching little girls? Yes. No. Yes. Hell no. My first. What type of. Like my I'm first sorry, how time. Can... Imagine like your first time, you know, someone seeing your vagina outside of your mother is this male doctor checking if you're being honest about your own body. It's like, I have no privacy. No, they just use their their finger. And, like, spread it. And look. For the hymen. And that's stupid, because some women aren't born with hymens. I was using tampons that could have broke my hymen before I ever... You can use tampons as a virgin. I'm saying, like, that could have broke my hymen. Yeah, anything. Anything can do that. Anything. You can split. You can do sports. You can horse ride. You can... You can kick too hard or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can stretch too vigorously or something and it can break. Anything can happen. Mm. And so that so that Some that really that okay, really TI. made me Yeah. So when that story came out too, I was I understood her her story and it was really um annoying. And then come to find out years later my father paid for that checkup. No way. So I'm here thinking, okay, I have one person on my side that's there. And then, and I honestly feel like I, my boundaries are set now. I feel like narcissist, narcissist or not, I don't want you in my space. Cause that was like a big moment for me. I forgive them, but I honestly don't. I don't think narcissists have boundaries or can respect boundaries. They don't. They don't see no privacy. They'll come in the bathroom when you're in there. Don't oh, ask wow. nothing. Yeah. That's my mom. Barge into your room. Come sit down somewhere. If you know you were sitting there, they won't ask if they can take stuff. Money sometimes with me. You know, they'll just take things and just wear stuff that's yours or it won't ask you. Like, you know, that's what, that, that's I'm what they like do. PTSD flashbacks. <laughs> Same. When I figured all of this out, I was just like, wow. And I was just like, okay, another thing I need to heal, you know? 
when I figured this out. It was like crazy, mm. but yeah, that I moment. Feel like that's why I have such issues sometimes with sharing and with, like, it's for definitely a lot the of thing. Stuff for, yeah, for a lot of stuff, it was like clothes, my food, like that. I feel like that was another thing that I had an issue with food. With yeah, was because it seemed like sometimes for the my most mother part, used to hide food. It was like sometimes the, the thing last she loved. thing I could control. Oh my god, yeah, there were certain things that we weren't allowed to eat, and I was like, what? Because it's hers. That's so unfair. At least eat it outside the house. No, or it's going to sit right in the fridge and we're not allowed, allowed to touch, to touch it. it. That is not good. That's not good. You're basically teaching your child when they go out into the world to literally... I don't know. Like, I don't know. Like The way that I was scared to ask you if I could have some almond milk type shit. Right? Shape. I got to this girl's house and it took me five minutes to be like, can, can, I, <laughs> can, I, can I please trouble you for some oh, old put yeah. a drop of almond milk? Yeah, that's what it <laughs> Because does. she made me afraid of asking for things because like my mom used to ground me. choices. Choices is another thing too. Mm-hmm. When they ask you to do something but they know what the fuck they want. But you come and give your choice and you'd be like, no, you're wrong. You're stupid. Or to, for making like, that choice. ask me to do something or ask me, like, and if the answer is no, no? Yeah. So why did you say why, it like a question? Right? It wasn't a fucking question. It was a demand. It was a statement. Right? Say, say what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> Don't set me up. Oh, my God. You don't got to set me up. Just say what you like. Just tell me to go do something so I can't say no. That so is this a way, if trigger I, for me to this day. At least if I blatantly say no to you just telling me to do thing, we got a little more grounds to work yeah. with of, like, okay, I was wrong. But you asked me, like... Can you or would you or like, and if I don't feel like it, like, that's not an option. Or yeah. like, if like, it was never, I feel like a lot of that rubbed off. My sister is not a narcissist, but when we were all in the house together, that behavior from my mother rubbed off on her towards me. Mm. They both felt like they were just in charge, in control, could do whatever. Yeah. My, oh yeah, my sister exercised that control a lot as well. Yeah. Of like just knowing she was bigger, knowing she was stronger. Yeah. And like when our mom wasn't home, she was in charge. So if I didn't want to do it. I was just so too nice and naive. I was too nice and naive. I was always thinking and. (laughs) It's because you're a cancer. I was just always thinking (laughs) people were going to change, you know? I'm just like, yeah. This is this is all right. She's just going through something right now. But when the circumstances don't go in her way, it's like you're living with the devil or like... God forbid she had a bad day. Word. <laughs> no, I know. Since I got like... Just come home on t- some shit. When was like the no bullshit moment for you? When you finally said, no, I'm not taking no more of this. And you actually told her about her shit. Um, when was that moment for you? Not okay. <laughs> well, I don't know. Like, that's a hard question because probably when while I was under her roof, that was not an option. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't until. I remember the first time I ever hit her back. But because I was grown, mm-hmm. way too grown for this woman to be putting her hands on me. Mm-hmm. And she really, like, it, but it was a really crazy bad mm-hmm. whole situation. Mm-hmm. Really bad. But um, probably when I moved out and I ended up not speaking to her. Because, like, I was 18 and I had put um, been put in this program called Midway. Yeah. And, um... I, like, I didn't have to speak to her. I don't remember, though. Mm-hmm. I really don't remember. That's, like, that's, like... You know what? Honestly, like I feel like a year when I was moving before I moved to Alabama. Mm-hmm. Oh no, I remember it's coming back. So I was move. I was gonna move to Alabama, and um, this is actually what officially I was gonna move to Georgia. Mm-hmm. Long story short, that didn't work out, and I didn't want to go to Alabama. Mm-hmm. Obviously, yeah. Um, and but I was I got stuck at my mother's house because I was only at her house to say goodbye. Yeah. And I had my whole life packed up in my car with <laughs> damn goofy movie. Yeah. And oh, goofy. I was freaking saying goodbye and got the news that I was not going to Georgia. And I was like, well, I'm, oh my god, I don't know what I'm doing. There's no way I could be stuck here. Like, what do I do? I just quit my job. Like, what do I do? 
And um, da da da. So I'm staying with her, and it's like rough. It's like real rough. Mm-hmm. It's always been rough because we haven't addressed any of our issues yet. So even to this day, if we're all rounding each other for too long, if I have to stay with her, like it's not a good idea. Mm-hmm. And I remember I was grown as hell, <laughs> and she was trying. I saw that look in her eyes when she was like, "How they look when they're like wanting to hit you or about to hit you." Mm-hmm. And she didn't. Um, thank you, thank you, Jesus, mm-hmm. thank you, Allah, thank mm-hmm. whatever. I don't whatever. Um, yeah. She asked me mm-hmm. my opinion. On an argument she was having with her boyfriend. Now, mind you, she was wrong. And I was trying to gently be like, I see what he's talking about. Like, mm-hmm. I, I, I feel like there's, you know, a happy medium. And you guys can compromise. And, like, maybe this or maybe I'm that. I'm not gentle with her anymore. And she wanted... No, me neither. Yeah. But at the time, I was still afraid of my mother. And yeah. she wanted me to agree with her. Yeah. Her she was right, obviously. So yeah. when I didn't, now I was embarrassing her. Now it was this, now it was that. And for whatever fucking reason the psycho yeah was walk carrying around walking around um maniacally with this um broom and she ended up taking the broom off the stick and this was all like absent-minded as hell like she was cleaning my mom was an anxious cleaner yeah just ocd and so she was sweeping and i don't know how or why she ended up taking the thingy thing off the broom but i remember i said or did something like I no, I said something that was like you're like you're wrong, like because you are wrong, and she, there was a few times where she just had a look on her face or she like was swinging this broom, but at this point in time, she like I swear she raised it up like she wanted to hit me with the broomstick, and I lost my mind. I screamed my head off at her, and I that's not. Wait, so that again? She hit you with the no? Broom? She raised it like you know, like right now if like and I like we're doing this, and I was like. Yeah. She did, it's like she did that with the like she she was not one to hit me with objects either because yeah. she would never let a CPS case be built against yeah. her. Mm-hmm. There was only very far and few in between that she slipped yeah, up and hit us enough. with. I know, I know. Trust me, I know. We went through a lot of psychological, emotional abuse, but thank God the physical abuse. You know what? Scrap that. That's no, not no, no. Fortunate for someone. To no, not I know get what you hit. mean, but I don't take it the it's wrong way, good. and I hope no one else took it, yeah. takes it the wrong way. Because no, I, I am it's lucky. Not, yeah, it could have been worse. Yeah. I know people that got beat and hit worse. I know people that lived with scars and bruises all the time. Yeah. Or even if it wasn't all the time, when their parents did whoop they ass, they beat the shit. I know. I don't. I yeah. I got you know my ass handed to me, but it was always like hair pulling, open hand smacks to the face, yeah. like, like that stuff is like. Oh, I always got hit in the face. That's disrespectful. I always got hit in the you, face. Hey. Oh, hey, yeah, what? That oh. Is so disrespectful. Nothing but getting hit in the face. And the I can I got the dragged anger. I got dragged from my closet to like the computer screen because I had like a fucking MySpace when I wasn't supposed to by the head of my hair. Yo, these parents and are I had lucky. to like try to walk and keep up with her or else like I was getting straight dragged. So I, she asked me about my, my penis, and so she raises it up to me like that, and I bug the hell out, and I was like, I was just like, no, like, you hit me too much in my childhood. I'm too grown for you to threaten me and be making me feel like you're about to hit me now as a fucking mm. adult. I was like, no. And, you know, we continued to argue and yell, and she, she immediately actually, like, got defensive. It was like, I wasn't going to hit you with it. I don't care. Why are you raising a broomstick to me, mm-hmm. bruh? Mm-hmm. Why? Like, put, I was like, put the broomstick down. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, put the broomstick down. Enough the broomstick. Put that shit down, bro. You don't need to be careful. Talk with your hands, then. You don't yeah. gotta talk with a damn broom. Right? <laughs> like this crazy woman. The worst. The worst ever was when um I was about to get in the shower, so I was like down to my towel, and I didn't put the dishes away. I thought I, I told you to put the dishes away. Da, 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 da. So I come out all scared, like ah, I don't want something bad to happen. Let me go hurry up and put the dishes away. Yeah. So I'm out there in the kitchen. We live on the second floor. So imagine like this apartment. You live on the second floor. Yeah. We're in the kitchen. There's a window there, and like a window there. And on this window, you see a line of trees. And on this window is an empty field. Like there's the in the. Nobody could see me. Yes. I was on the second floor. Nobody was looking at me. No one could see me. My mom yeah. had a big thing about, like, oh, people could see in the windows. You need to keep, like... If it's Mine, night- too. If it's nighttime and the curtains are open, like, absolutely not. Close the curtains. Close the blinds. 
do not allow people to see into your home when it's dark, right? Okay, so apparently in her mind, everyone was seeing me in a, in a towel in the kitchen on the second floor next to, like, a nursing home and, like, other apartments that on the... Whatever. You can't... See. So, starts bugging out on me. He's like, what are you doing out here? No, you shouldn't. Da, da, da. And at some point, like, I dropped my towel because, like, she was yelling at me or, like, she may have hit me already. Mm-hmm. And I just... I remember my towel dropping. And that is when, like... She and I had a frying pan in my hand. Damn. It was in my hand. Mm-hmm. So that is the loophole in mm-hmm. her story. Mm-hmm. It was in my hand. Mm-hmm. She was talking with her hands and slapped that fucking frying pan into my face so hard. Damn. I had an instant welt. Instant. It was on this side of my yeah. face. I feel like to this day there's like a difference in this cheekbone. Yeah. And like had me go to school and be like, well, just tell them the truth. It was an accident. Like, as you, girl, how do you accidentally leave that type of mark on my face? Like, what are you talking about? One time she threw a plastic deodorant at my sister's head so hard mm-hmm. that she needed two staples in her head and told her, <laughs> just tell them that it was a speaker that fell. Like, the, t- the hospital was a speaker that fell. My mom her. left me with this woman one time, and you see the scar on my eye? Yeah. Um, she threw the air freshener without the cover, and it slipped my whole eye. Yeah, my mom My mom left me. It was me and my mom at the time. My little sisters weren't born yet. But, um... How I, much older than your sisters are you? A lot. Yeah. Um... Uh, my sister is 16 now. That's the youngest, oldest one. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. That's so really cool. she waited a long a while because... And that's a, probably another big separation between, like, you versus she had your time, sisters. I bet she had more time to be herself, I guess. Or, I don't know. Mm. But, um, yeah. So, you were saying about the... Yeah, sorry. I feel like we got way off topic. Or, like, I got, like... No, we're way... still on topic of how mother and daughter and our relationship. Oh, you asked me when was the first time I stood up to my mom. And, yeah. like, yeah. So, what? why? When was the first time you ever did? Me... Um, and did you live home? Yes. Good for you. Because, alright, so the thing with, I think it's water signs overall. I don't know. I'm Probably. Sp- I'm speaking of cancers. It's either we're really nice or we're really the most horrible You're a person. Tsunami. Yes. I've been giving this niceness for so long. I would say it's true for Pisces too, so probably all water, water signs. All water all signs, of them. probably. When we're calm, we're the lo- most loving. We want hugs, we want touches, we want kisses, we want all of that. We're we want caring, we want to cook. Supportive. Yeah, like we we were nice. Very, and we love white things. And the the last straw was the virginity check, but I, I I held it in, and went about my business. Mm. But so I was in the. Violation. I was in the last I was in the last year of high school. And you know the last senior. When you're a senior, you're finishing, you're getting ready to go to college or whatever, preparing your mind for the next step of life where you have to be your own person. And I'm dealing with all of that. I got exams, I got all of this shit. I gotta go to fuck church and do all these unnecessary things that are not for me. You know what I mean? The only thing that was for me was doing sports. That was my getaway, you know? And the I needed the help mentally to push through, but it was hard because I wasn't getting that at home. Right. And it's track and field is a very hard sport. Track and field, all sports, basically. Because um, you're wearing tearing muscles every day, plus weekends. You're going to track meets. Then you have to balance your mental with the schoolwork. And at home wasn't... And I was just getting fed up. very demanding. Yes. And I was... And imagine all of that plus um, financial issues. Um, I could... Sometimes I could... I I would be scared to ask to buy a a box of sanitary napkins. Hmm. Because... Because of how she was. You know what I mean? It was just so aggressive. I was afraid to ask if I can go buy deodorant. 
you know i would have to like you know so like when you need things and being that's scared yes. of needing them. and that's and up till this day it affects me because i don't like asking people for things yeah i do not like asking for anything unless it's like i'm, I'm in need of it like i will not ask you I will sit here and if I hear an ounce of complaining because I asked you something, I will never ask you again because of that and because of how she is. So with that being said... Or even just simply constantly being afraid that for like really basic human reasons you're bothering someone yeah, or annoying them or making like them mad. I don't like to feel like that, yes. I'm terrified I'm always like upsetting someone. Me too. That's why I bugged out the time I was telling you because I felt like I was bothering somebody you know because I when I ask something my intention is never to bother somebody it's either one I want to fix it or two I just want your opinion Mm -hmm. that's the only time I'm never trying to ask you something like out of like to annoy you because I don't like people doing that to me you know what I mean so anyways all of that is happening and stuff like that and I wasn't allowed to have friends. And uh, it was getting on my fucking nerves. All right. It was getting on my nerves. I wasn't allowed to ha- socialize. Yep. She didn't like anybody? Her excuse was, it's a scary world or some shit. And people aren't honest and blah, blah, blah. You ain't honest. Mm. You are not honest. My own home, I feel like I probably get shot in my own home, first of all. So, how is that different for me? I think my inside, my home prepared me, is way nicer outside than inside at the time. That's how I felt. So, I couldn't have friends. And I couldn't socialize. I couldn't do this. I couldn't talk to boys. I couldn't, I couldn't talk to girls. If I do talk to girls, they're not good enough. Or... Then I don't like their mother. I don't like how they parent. What I don't I like that. What I have to do with me? What I, th- I don't know what I have to do with me. Mm-hmm. That has nothing to do with me. I'm just, I'm just trying to have a friend to talk about school, talk about probably this boy's cute, or talk about or maybe what we're doing. The school is being fucking mean to me. And this is the one girl that's nice to me, and you have to take her from me as well. The thing, too, is like they think all females talk about is boys. Yeah. That was their excuse. That these friends are bad influences they're, they're, this girl is fast or she'll she'll get pregnant by so and so and if you follow her or you go down the, I'm gonna have a whole different conversation about parenting and sex but yes so I couldn't have friends and I was really annoyed that I didn't have a relief because sports wasn't becoming fun anymore because they were pressuring me and I know I don't know if it's different here, but in Jamaica you have to pay for everything yourself. Mm-hmm. There's no. Um, That's why I couldn't do sports. Yeah, I couldn't pay for like certain things I wanted. My nutrition, like the food to eat, I couldn't afford certain you things need like fuel that. to perform. And don't get me started on the diet. My diet was just not helping me. You know, it was not helping me yeah. at all, yeah, and I and I just felt. You know, compared to when you have a healthy diet and you do sports, it's different. You know, from having trash ass diet. Mm-hmm. And I That's just what that movie, The Game Changer. Yeah. Talks about that. And I was just fed up because I felt like I don't know where my future is going, because people are complaining about finances all the time around me. So now I'm thinking I can't. You know. Although I don't feel you need college to be successful, but at the time, so we're told, I was told that to be successful, you have to go to college. So I am thinking, okay, they're talking about all these things in front of me and making me feel like I have to, if I don't get a scholarship from sports, it's over, right? Which never happened. Because of Mm. the whole... I just gave up. Yeah. I just didn't love it anymore. Because I was consistently being accused of having a... Being plain and straight, they thought I was a hoe. My own family literally thought I was a hoe. Because I wouldn't... They'd say I am um, secretive. But it's not secretive. I'm afraid to talk 
because Aww. you people have li- literally it's crazy how they think they put you into this state where you feel like you have to be so private and closed off and if I do decide to talk you're not happy with it so why am I talking to you there's no reason for me to talk to you. But like we said, we're narcissists. Nothing is good. Nothing makes right? them happy. Nothing is the right thing. So that's where I made the conclusion. I'll cut you off. But anyway, getting to my moment. Um, so that happens. And um, I start discovering male relationships and female relationships. And I started f- him. We met. Mm. Um, the Aquarius. Mm-hmm. And um, um, we've been friends for a minute before this happened. But we lived in the same community at the time. And my mom used to send me to buy... You guys call it lotto numbers? Yeah. she used to, But we call it a different name back home. What is it? Cashbot. <laughs> okay. And she used to send me, but you're not allowed to go. But in Jamaica, nobody cares. You know, you're not supposed to be buying it under 18. Oh, okay. It's yes. like corner stores or bogeys. And yes. Okay. And she would, she would send me to go buy it. And I hated it because I hate the kind of people that are in there. They're just, just grown ugly. Kind of like the people in the corner stores and yeah. bodegas. Yes. Yes. Exactly yeah. like that. Like the one that and I used to seen. hate doing that. And she used to send me to the supermarket mad late. Uh yeah, but when I complain about it, nobody listens. So I'm just like, I might as well just tough it out. That's if crazy. I die, so I die. Sc- so it's a scary world, and you can't have friends, but you can go to the store late by yourself. That was my point. That's crazy. That was my point exactly. Don't make no sense. I'm talking about nine p.m., eight p.m. But let me come home. Jamaica. Let me come home at like seven, eight o'clock. It's a problem. Yeah, that's that narcissistic Because my training finishes issue. at 6, and I have to get a taxi to come home. So anyways, I go to the supermarket, and we start conversing. Um, <laughs> we start conversing now. Um, at that time... Curious? Yeah, at that time, he wasn't my, my boyfriend. As yeah, yet. I was just friends. Yeah, we were just friends. And we, um, he came to, because I texted him and said, I'm going to the supermarket. And he was like, oh, cool, I'm going to go there too to get something for my mom. And I was just like, all right, cool, I'll see you there. So I'm like, all right, cool. And I'm just like, why not? I can't have friends anywhere. This person lives right here. Why can I meet them? So I said, what the hell? Go ahead, right? Mm-hmm. And I usually make friends with boys easier than girls. Because girl, me and girls just never mesh. Because I wasn't like the girly girl. I was, I was very athletic. Okay. And I didn't really dress up. You know, I didn't wear... And did you get in because you got along with guys? They probably resented you for that. I don't like, know. They may have been jealous. I don't know if they did. I don't know. But anyways, I go to the supermarket and we just start talking. And I told her I was going to go somewhere after the supermarket around where he lives to pick up something. So that would buy me some time. So um, on my way around there, we decided I'm not going straight home. I might as well just stop at his house and chill. He is he was the coolest person. He was just there talking about all kinds of stuff, talking about you know, when you've just met a new friend and you're just talking about like the things they like, what football team or stuff like that. That's all we happened. Nothing else happened, no no sexual shit, no kissing or nothing. Nothing at all. It That's was just talking. It was just pure a pure innocent right? Pure innocent. conversation and and I was like the way we were talking and getting in, in depth, I didn't realize the time. Oh, yikes. Yikes. The time was like 9, 10 p.m., right? And I was like, oh, shit. I was like, I got to go. And listen to what he said. 
this is what he said. I'm gonna walk you home. Aww. Right? And my mother is like, don't have friends because out there is just awful. And I was like, nah, because I was scared. Because like, if you know, if they come see me with you, they're Not just gonna only think do I the have worst. To go and go get my ass beat, but I also have to come up with like where I was and not be with someone that she don't know. But the thing is, she knows him. Oh, she's seen him before. But okay. she, you know, when they play stupid, like they don't know who this person is because they just want the the fire to be on your ass. She knew they this person. Yeah, she like explain knows. Yourself, like, yes, because we used to live around that area where he lived. So, okay, okay. Um. So he says, "Can I walk you?" Yes. Home? So he says, "Can I walk you home?" And I was like, "Yeah, okay, but I'm not really sure. If you get in trouble, I don't need to get in trouble, because I'm used to my mom cussing and stuff like that." So we're walking and stuff. Guess what? There she is, with our neighbor. Is she looking? Looking for me. <laughs> just like <laughs> mad embarrassing <laughs> isn't isn't this lovely i wasn't embarrassed because i know i didn't do anything and i don't give a shit because it's either this or nothing it's either this or not have friends and i prefer this right that's how i felt yeah so <laughs> i'm i'm walking and she's bare man she's like pregnant huh. and she's out there cut and then she's like She's calling my name. She's like, ah, and I was just like, oh. this is literally that was my breath. Like, oh man, here we go with the bullshit. Cause every day there's a different bullshit, right? But today this was the bullshit. There's always bullshit with her. There's always something right. that causes her to go, ah, you know. But today I was in the the fire. Yeah. And she crosses the road and she's just like, ah, la, 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 la. and she was so loud too. And I was just embarrassed. And I saw her walk, as I saw her walk across the road, I was just like, I'm gonna talk to you later because I'm not about to stand on the road and do this. I don't like that. Absolutely not. I'm not gonna do that. I'm sorry. That's the kind of bougie in me. I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna do that with nobody. Not my parent, no, nobody. So yeah, I like saw her coming, ass. and I was just like, "I'll see you. I'll text you if I have a phone." After right. This. Um, Yo, it's so what bad. it is. I'll see you there. Sorry, you gotta go by. So he mm. was like, "All right, cool." He and was just s- cool. He was just smiling and just chilling, and just like, mm-hmm. "All right, cool." Watching your mom like lose her mind, like wobble like a penguin across the road. So he witnessed her. He stayed. I moved. He stood there, and he took the heat. He was. She was just like, "Who are you?" She was like, "Who are you?" I could hear him too as it faded as I was walking. It's like, I'm I'm so and so, (laughs) and like he was just so calm. He didn't raise his voice, and I just I was so angry. I didn't even think of what was going on there i was just so angry because i was just like why, you is she, why is she doing this right now this right. is so embarrassing you don't know this person this is and this is how she talks to anybody and i was just like oh that's so ugly right you're making this loud ass commotion on the road like i don't like that yeah. and this community is very small like people are gonna see me go to school and you're doing this <sighs> And he, he was like, we're just chilling, like... Because in his household, he's allowed to have friends over and, you know, he's allowed to leave his home freely. <laughs> Strange concept. Right? <laughs> and it was weird. So he was just, like, really confused on why she's this woman, this pregnant woman. A lot woman. of people that I feel like grew up in <laughs> not the way we did yes. are also, like, really? Like, Azalea? Yes. That's how Azalea is with me. She's like... Like, she, we were watching whatever movie or show, and I was like, my mom was worse than that. And oh. she was like, what? I'm like, girl, what? Yeah. You don't know nothing. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. she decides to finish with him now and says, oh, wait till I see your ass again. And she was like, don't talk to my daughter. I don't want you around my daughter anymore. Da, 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 da. Y'all, all y'all think about is da, da, da. I was just like, anyways. Uh- 
Anyway. So as I'm walking, I hear her loud ass voice saying, Vanessa, Vanessa, Vanessa. Behind me, I'm (laughs) ignoring her until I reach my gate because I am not trying to talk to you. I'm talking to you in front of our house. I'm not talking to you because that's disturbing the peace. Yeah, it actually literally is. You know, next thing you know, police come and then some all kind of shit. So anyways, she decides to make a phone call to my aunt while this is going on and say, see this, here she is. Like she's walking away and acting like she doesn't hear me and da, 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 and da, da, da. And she was like, and then I hear her talking and I was just like, and she's telling my auntie some lies. Like she's saying, I sent her out, oh my chocolate, huh? I'm sorry. Um, I'm, I sent her out how much hours ago? How many hours ago? And she's just coming back. I see her walking with a boy. I don't know what they were doing. Da, da, da. And it's just like, as she's saying that, I'm raggedy. I don't know what chipped in my head. And I was Probably just. she was trying to. Just, like, that's I, a job that's, in your character. That was the last time. So, like, now I'm a hoe because I. That was the last time she questioned my character. I lost it. I was like, while she was on the phone, I was just like, I'm tired of you telling me what I can and cannot do, okay? You're a liar. You don't want me to have any friends. And I don't want to talk to Mm -hmm. auntie. And the reason why my phone isn't working is because my phone battery died. And even if it didn't die, I wouldn't answer you, okay? Because... One, I'm under 18. I'm not supposed to buy your gambling numbers. And two, I told you where I was going after that. So fix up. I was going off. I was just like, I don't like people telling lies on me. I don't like people telling Rightly lies on me. So. I hate it. Because I don't tell lies on you. I could never. I don't like it. So I, I flipped out. My aunt was like really calm. And she was just like, Vanessa, I'm really disappointed in you, and da da da. For what? I was just like, extra. um, okay, I really don't care. At this point, I'm so fumed that this woman, first of all, tried to make a fucking disgrace of me on the road, and two, um, she's here making me look like I'm some hoe. Right. Loud as fuck. People can hear from everywhere. Right, and now people it's know. And why would you want everyone thinking your daughter's a hoe? That's what I'm saying. I've never degraded this woman's character ever, ever. And I could say some shit that could really hurt you. I could say some things because some. I, remember, I live with you. I see everything you do. Okay, <laughs> I see everything you do. But yeah, that was the first time. Um, I actually stood up for myself and after that I think I had my rebellious moment um, where I just couldn't take it anymore so all that being quiet and stuff was out the door all of that if you did something bad to me it was a constant fight if you want to fight we're going to fight now Okay. That's, that's what happened after that moment Um, If she said something, I was like, all right, cool. And what I did, too, I used to threaten and say, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. And I did. So I was just like, all right, bet. And they planned up. And that's a whole different story. But that was the first time I stood up to them. But. uh, That was a good story, though. Yes. It was a big moment in my life because. That's another thing too. If you feel like you you you're not going to talk or what's the word? Not going to talk. What's the word? It's like if you feel afraid to stand up for yourself, don't. The worst thing that can happen is if they try and hit you and I'm saying to you that's the worst that could happen because I know some situations are very bad where they get violent. But it's, you know... Like, okay. I like, was thinking if, if I was going to die, I might well die with the words I want to be said said. Yeah, I, knowing that you stood up for yourself yeah. and spoke your truth. Yeah. And, okay, suppose they kick you out. Okay. Then you're out. Yeah. Or, like, you're out. Yeah. You're free. Like, run. Yes. 
run or they <laughs> might <laughs> <laughs> or like you know like if it turns into like being hit like you see them come for you in violence yeah run like still do it like still run like yeah. run away run far far away like there is only so much like try to hold on try to hang on as long as you can yeah power through it radical acceptance this is not your fault mm-hmm it is just how they are and there may be nothing you can do about it especially while you're still young or while you're still living under their control and in their household yeah until you just can get out on your own get a job get money get a car and leave yeah get a car yeah seriously that's yes. the best thing i ever did with yes. a car yes because a car means freedom. Do yeah. not put it in their name. Do not take their yeah. insurance. Do yes. not co- let them nothing. Nothing. Give nothing, and they will try. Yeah. They will see. Personally, my mom didn't. She was very yeah. like fend for yourself. She was like, yeah. I don't got the credit nor the mm-hmm. no. Yeah. No. She would not jeopardize the her insurance points or nothing. But mm-hmm. um, a lot of other parents I witnessed firsthand be like, it could go in my name, and then oh. Da, 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 we'll keep it up and I'm taking your car yeah. it's in my name so mm-hmm. don't no yeah. we're not doing that mm-hmm. get it in your buy some shitty old Honda that's yeah. actually gonna be probably one of the best cars you ever drive yeah. or a Toyota was, or an old mm-hmm. Ford or whatever and yeah. just get a car get it in your name own it fully and just get out and if you absolutely worst case scenario you can live in your car get a $10 a month gym membership you can shower there and work out mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah Seriously. What would you say about the insurance thing, though? You have to have it. I mean, you have to have a job. Yeah. You have to have a job. And then the worst that happens is when you have a job is you have to pay insurance. What is the absolute most it could be? Like, probably a couple hundred dollars a month. Yeah. That's on it. It's for really new, not that bad. Yeah, for new drivers, the most I've seen is like 150 That's like the mid. 150 Yeah. Yeah. Or, like, even all the way up to $200, yeah. but if you have no other real bills... Yeah. Like, that should be and your there's main so priority. many jobs that if you have a clean license, utilize that. Take yeah. advantage of it. Use they have your benefits. Car. Yeah. Yeah, use your cl- car and your clean license, and do not allow your parents yes. to put something in your name. And if they put something in your name, file fucking fraud. Mm-hmm. <laughs> file for fraud. <laughs> I know people's credits that were completely ruined. Because of their parents. <laughs> Excuse me, yeah. My, my, my mother has tried. Has no, tried. Yeah. Fraud. Tried to make me take out a car in my name or in her. Like, there's been bills Yeah. Yeah. put in people's names yeah. that, like, end up going on your credit score. Yeah. And will don't, affect you. Don't. Don't do let not. them ne- nothing. Nada. And, None if of they, them. and if they do when you're 18, yo, I... Mm-hmm. file a lawsuit <laughs> like that is illegal it does not matter like they showed no mercy on you I don't feel like you should have to show mercy on them either. yes yeah and then that's no, I, not spiteful like you should not have to no, suffer that's because your of boundaries. Their decisions yeah that's your boundaries and your self respect and making standing up for yourself yeah. you have every right yeah you have every right yeah when I like okay the friend I mentioned earlier whose mother just is a tyrant Mm -hmm. And they stole this girl's money. She has a twin sister. Same. And they forged her signature on a check and stole like a thousand dollar or like some crazy amount of money. Thousands possibly Mm -hmm. of dollars in money from her. And that messed up her life so bad at that point in time and she did not press charges because they had her so convinced that she would be doing something so wrong we tried so hard to convince this girl like please yeah file charges against them they stole from you Damn. like no they were not entitled to your money they did not does you did not deserve to have anything taken from you that you did not give no and she didn't and to this day, it has continued to fuck up her life. That she does not stand up for herself and stick up to them. And is too worried. You've got to do it. Yeah. Do you you not- have to do it. Don't ever think it's going to get better. It's not. It's not. And they're going to be who they are. They're going to make you feel like shit about it no matter what you do. And remember, you got, those yes. who matter do not mind. And those who mind do, do not it matter. In, do it with fear. If, you, if you're scared, still do it. Yeah. You do just it. have to. You have to. And that to. is when I feel like the only... 
even like I don't even think of that would make a narcissist learn their lesson. No, like, even if the there law... is no lesson because they don't feel that they're wrong. No, so you just have to it say your piece. You just have to give your piece, say your words, and go about your business. That's it. There's no other thing. The only thing left to do on their part is get therapy and know their own selves. With you with yourself, once you fit, you fit, you're old enough to leave, leave. Because you will be trapped there. You're basically owned. The longer you stay, the, the more, worse. Yeah, the worse it gets. The more you'll, you'll be, you'll be, be like forty, still living with them, and still saying the same thing, over and over. And again. still suffering. Do it for yourself. Your your sanity. Come on, you gotta do it for your sanity. But yeah, I think we covered all the things that um. Yeah, just sharing our experiences. Anything you can relate to. Yeah. Look for the signs and remember. To mentally train yourself. That's step number one. Most important is you have to rewire your brain. You have to train your mind yeah. to step outside of the situation, step outside of the person, their attitude, their energy. Yeah. And just, it is not your fault. Yeah. It's not your fault. You're doing your best. It's yes. not your fault. Find a mantra. Yeah. Pick a mantra. It's not my fault. I'm doing my best. It's not, I'm, I cannot take it personal. This mm-hmm. is just how they are. This is just how they are. Whatever you can to keep yourself sane and keep it together and remain strong until you can do whatever you can in your power to get away and get out. Get your money up, not your funny up. Get a whip. Yeah. Get some car insurance. Get your credit. Do Just do something. The best thing you can do in this life is just take care of yourself and succeed. Yes. Yes, that's so true. That's the biggest stun on anyone is just take care of of yourself. yourself. Because... If you take care of yourself and that person take care of himself, everybody taking care of themselves, you have a bunch of people taking care of themselves, and then they want to take care of each other, and it's just a whole... When they can, because you can't pour out of an empty glass if this person is right. draining everything from you, how you have nothing left to, to give. give. Yes. You have to rely on yourself. Don't allow someone else to be codependent on you, and do not be codependent. Think about your children, biological or non-biological. Remember that if you don't fix yourself now, it will be passed on. Like some trait that hasn't been healed will pass on. Because it doesn't, you don't have to, like adopted children go in situations and they become toxic because of the parent they've been with. You understand? So you have to heal yourself. Think about the legacy you want to, you know, you want to have. Even if you don't want children, people who are around you. You know what I mean? Like, the ones that you most love and care about. If like whatever you would wish the best something. for them. Yeah. Yeah, siblings is a good cousin, yeah. siblings, close family members. I do most of my things. Like anything I do, I always think of my sisters. And and if you're like me and you didn't really have family like that in your life or even like even like me again, you had you did have family they just were not around yeah. and they weren't in your life they were what do you call con- conveniently absent yeah yeah um for me i um was not you know not the kind of person that was like at, you know for a while for a long time i didn't feel like oh this is what i was put through so i wouldn't want to say i was put through it i you know my defense mechanism my coping mechanism was to be rough was to be harsh Same. and to be aggressive and angry i do not see that from you at all that's so crazy me yeah i was i was yeah but it took me seeing how my actions and behaviors negatively affected or hurt other people and the people i was losing you will lose people in this life yeah if you do not heal yeah if you if damage might already be done try to heal Try to fix it. Be honest with yourself. And if you cannot do it for yourself, do it for the people that you love and care about and that you don't want to hurt them. Yeah. You could do right by them by doing better for yourself. Yeah. For real. Yeah, I hope. I hope this helped. Me too. Um, Whoever's out there, because the two of us have been in a household with a narcissistic parent. And, um... Yeah, this is us signing out. Don't forget to like this video if you found any of the information u- information useful. Um, click the subscribe 
button that would really help me a lot and definitely give it a share if you think someone else would be yeah. helped by this if someone you know love or care about True. is dealing with something like this please give this to them so they can try to get the help that they need and deserve yeah for sure all right guys thanks for listening see you <laughs>